Hi everyone, Alvis Hack here. I have a video for you today for informational purposes only um, on NSSI, non-suicidal self-injury. Uh, I've taken a lot of information from um, the National Institute of Health, um, articles called uh, Relations Between Non-Suicidal Self-Injury and Suicidal Behavior in Adolescence, a Systematic Review. It's from 2016. Um, the DSM-5 Diagnosis of Non-Suicidal Self-Injury Disorder, a review of the empirical literature from 2015. Uh, Non-Suicidal Self-Injury, What We Know, What We Need to Know from 2014. I got information from Frontiers in Psychiatry, and maybe some others as well, and of course my take. Okay, wanted to get that out of the way. So, what is NSSI? Non-Suicidal Self-Injury is defined as the deliberate self-inflicted destruction of body tissue without suicidal intent and for purpose, purposes not socially sanctioned. Uh, it includes behaviors such as cutting, burning, biting, you know, scratching skin, uh, eraser burns, things like that. Okay, so NS, NSSI was included in the section three of the fifth version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, uh, as a condition in need of further study. Okay, so that's uh, what it falls under, in need of further study. Now, what are some reasons for NSSI? Um, I'm quoting here. Uh, first, by a wide margin, NSSI most commonly functions to temporarily alleviate overwhelming negative uh, emotion. Uh, intense negative emotions precede NSSI, and the performance of NSSI results in reduced negative emotions as well as feelings of calm uh, and relief. Second, slightly more than one half of people uh, report that they self-injure as a form of self-directed anger or self-punishment. Uh, and there are other reasons uh, too. Some individuals say that they, they feel alive uh, and less numb, uh, for example, when they engage in NSSI. Now, here's the point I really uh, wanted to make. Um, people who engage in NSSI do not intend to end their lives. But, and to paraphrase Pee Wee Herman, this is a big but. Uh, individuals that engage in NSSI are much more likely to attempt suicide than individuals that do not engage in NSSI. Now, when I was practicing the potential for suicide of patients and clients I was working with uh, was always the biggest concern for me. Uh, and based on the information about NSSI, uh, I think it's uh, real important for psychotherapists to regularly conduct suicide assessment. And uh, just in case if you're wondering, no, bringing up the idea of suicide does not put the thought of suicide in the client's mind. It does not increase the possibility of suicide occurring, but just the opposite. Uh, it gives an opportunity to intervene uh, if necessary. So that's it for this video, and maybe at uh, some other time I'll delve a little bit deeper into some of the other aspects of NSSI.